Um, so, so moving forward, you know, one thing <coughs> about over and over again that's coming up in a lot of Twitter questions is the Student Center represents the student body. Um, and something, at least in my four years here, I think in three of them we've seen tuition increases. Um, first year there was a tuition freeze um, from the governor. For the last, each of the last three years there's been a maximum level increase. In addition to room and board increases, housing increases, just lots of general money increases. Um, this year, the Senate did release a, a statement um, regarding the tuition increase, and um, there was a minimal amount of time, the time between the time that was announced um, that they were considering it and when the vote took place. With that said, what role do you think the Senate plays in maintaining college affordability and advocating for students? Um, and if it can be said as a fact, tuition has been increased to the maximum level of the last three years. Has the student senate been effective at advocating for students and college affordability? And how will your senate be different? Um, I think we've already um, put our best foot forward in terms of what we've started and the foundation that we're laying. Um, three weeks ago, um, I was the primary sponsor of a resolution that basically is going to give students the opportunity to ask and question, do you believe there's appropriate representation on the Budget Planning Council. Uh, the Budget Planning Council makes recommendations to the Board of Trustees and President Davis, which ultimately triggers a tuition increase or keeping tuition where it is. Um, students, as we know, are now the major benefactors of this university. We pay for almost 70% of the installations that happen here, um, but the representation of Budget Planning Council is disproportional, um, and eventually I'd personally like to see more students represented. Um, the issue in years past has been should we allow our press and should budget, budget planning councils um, be open to the public. Uh, but I think our attention now needs to shift to representation of students. And I think we're already putting a good effort forward. The REACH people are putting their best effort forward, and we're going to continue to do so for you. I think that there are two ways that things have changed to happen in the council. And uh, Senate, they can really focus on trying to get representation in budget planning council uh, meetings. I think that we should continue to lobby for student trustee voting rights. <laughs> Jared, you know, we need some shouting, we also need some dialogue. So Jared can take um, care of uh, the shouting parts, and the student senate, if elected this May, can take care of the speaking. Um, but speak reasonably and people will listen. Um, shout and people will close their windows. Or if you're in Athens, you'll get a noise violation. Um, I, I really do think that Senate's best bet is continual talking to the administration and, and really having that hard conversation, but not backing down as we have in years past. And um, I know that's something I can do, I know something Amr can do, Evan can do as an exec board. So. I've got three quick questions for each of the presidential candidates, and they're more individualized, so that way we can get stuff out of the way and move on. Um, Tony, to start off, one, I guess, criticism of you would be that, no, you haven't been, you were a transfer student, you weren't here um, all four years, you haven't been involved, deeply involved in the Senate all four years. How would you respond to that? Well, how would you say um, your qualifications make up for that, or is that even a 
disqualifier or a weakness? You know, I'd start off by saying that the transfer student part really doesn't affect me whatsoever. As soon as I got here, I love this institution. I love this institution when I came here my senior year of high school when I was looking at schools. The only reason I decided not to come here was so that I could continue playing sports, which I had to do at a Division three level. As soon as I decided to stop doing that, I made the switch to Ohio University, and I couldn't be happier with where I am. Right away, I started getting involved with different groups in small ways around campus. You know, I was new. It was kind of weird coming in as a sophomore, so I wasn't jumping in there right away. I wasn't involved with the campaign at all last year, so I didn't really get into Senate in a really high capacity at the beginning of this year. However, I did try to get involved with Senate because I've been in Senate at my last college, as well as in high school in my entire life whenever it was an opportunity. <coughs> I really care about this stuff. And I get called out sometimes for saying it's a hobby. But really, you know, when you take pride in something that you do, it doesn't really matter what you call it. I mean, that, that only reason what matters what you call it is so that other people can call you out for calling it that. That's all that matters. As long as I take pride in what I do, I care about it, and I put my full effort into it, then I have the ability to do it. There's nothing on this campus that a student here isn't qualified for. They have the capacity to do it, as long as they have the want and the determination to do it. I have that want and determination to be student senate president. I have many different qualifications and experiences other than just Ohio University student senate experiences that I think make me a great choice to be your student senate president. I believe that with those qualifications, it's a lot more than just the experience of student senate because as we've been talking about here today, you know, there's been some problems and challenges in the past few years with student senate. So that experience might not be staying too much when that's where you're really arguing. Jared, some people like to get on you because you missed some meetings. Um, I've seen a few tweets about that. Um, so I just want to give you an opportunity to address that. Obviously, you were elected member of Senate this year, um, served um, as HCC um, Senator, um, missed some commission meetings, my understanding. As someone who, who missed some meetings and who maybe technically should have been kicked out of Senate based on that, how would you address that criticism and well, just clear the air? Uh, yeah, so uh, last quarter, I don't want to go into too much detail, a lot of it's uh, kind of personal, uh, but uh, and not to like hide things from the general body or something like that. Uh, you know, last quarter was a rough quarter for me. I let it get the better of me. It was a mistake that I made. Uh, I apologize to Amrit, my commissioner currently. I apologize to Amrit after we had a good talk. I've been at every meeting since. I've been an extremely constructive member. As soon as my constituents found out, they started a, they started a petition that they didn't want me to stop being their senator. I've been a really good HTC senator, and I think that their support shows that. <coughs> I made a mistake, and I'll admit it. Like, so you're not going to try to get me like, to cover it up and say that it like, wasn't worthy of like, being punished in some way, you know? but I've made up for it. Zach, every year, um, at least every year I've been here, there have been at the very least two tickets, and at the top of one ticket always sits a very polished, um, <laughs> very uh, person who's, who's been around the block a few times with the student senate, um, who understands the way the university works, and who's branded very much as, a, as an insider, as someone who's going to be buddy-buddy with the university, as someone who's going to be a suck-up, someone who's not going to advocate for students because they just play politics, you know. Um, how would you respond to that? You know, I, obviously, you're not, not going to run from your qualifications, but with that said, often there is this kind of paradox set up between the outsiders and the insiders, the people who know Senate and who are playing politics, and the people who really care about the students. No, and that's a fair question. Um, I mean, this is clearly a different year. I'm clearly a different person. Um, but this is more than playing politics. You're talking about people's well-being, people's future. And I know, for one, that I cannot afford another tuition hike. Um, it's pretty sad when I'm asking myself the question, um, will I be able to get another loan to pay for my current tuition? Um, and to the extent, you know, being buddy-buddy with the administration, I promise you, uh, wanting to see students vote as to whether or not they think that there's good competency on the Budget Planning Council is not something that's going to gain me uh, kudos with the uh, current administration. Um, so I, I think, once again, I'm a guy who's been practicing what he's preaching. Um, I have what it takes to stand up to the administration and be the voice of students here on campus. Um, and, and Tony's right. Um, every person has the capacity to do the roles that we're running for. But the question is, do they have the capacity to do it well? I know the people running on REACH have the capacity to do it well. I've got one more question, and then after my, my last question, I'm going to go through as many of the Twitter questions as possible. <coughs> Ten minutes to six, but I don't really care unless there's a class in here at six. I'll go until we've answered what we have. I hope there's not a class in here at six. But um, with that said, my last question is this, and it's something we asked the candidates last year, and I think is a crucial question. You know, there are 
striking differences between some of the tickets and some of the candidates. Um, and I hope that we've helped eliminate some of those, because that's when you vote, because you vote on the differences between people and, and which you prefer. But in a student government, at least myself as a student, I see qualities in each of you and in each of your parties that I want. I want someone um, or a ticket of people who are close to the students, who have been spending time in various organizations and doing those types of things. I want someone like a Jared Henderson, who, unfortunately enough, I'm in the HTC Facebook group, so I get to see the notification every day how in touch he is with his constituency. Um, I want someone who understands the intricacies of university government or just how to get things done, because sometimes logistics do matter in terms of getting things done. How do you all see the other people sitting up here and the other people running on those tickets fitting into your student senate next year? Because at the end of the day, some people are going to win, some people are going to lose. And what we've seen in past years is people who lose disappear, um, and people who win fill in the remaining spots with some of their other friends, and then a year later, those people are running again. So is there value to the other people up here, and where do, they, where do you see them fitting in in your set? I will start with you. Now, there's more than great value in every person sitting up here with me. And I think our party has truly shown that to the student body from day one. When we said that we made a smaller ticket so that we could probably have a more democratic and collaborative effort on student senate next year, that shows our dedication to that. That's saying that we don't want to pull, put a full ticket up there believing that we can win and take every seat. We'll go in there with a smaller ticket, try to win every seat we're trying to, and then add the people from the other party so that we can really work together and take ideas from both platforms and people from across the base, across the party bases, okay? And then, when we had a treasurer drop out, we handled it the right way. We didn't let it get out of hand. He did a very good letter, handled it the correct way. Everyone was polite about it. It was done. As soon as that was handled, I made comments right away that I'd be more than happy, if elected, to work with Evan next year. And I think that we can really do that constructively and for the benefit of the entire student body. You know, you want to talk about experience. I would love to have their experience on Student Senate next year. I just want to be the Student Senate President. You know, they, they have gotten great things done. And Amrit this year, I was so impressed with how he handled uh, the situation he spoke to you earlier about. Uh, having those students get their degrees earlier, he did that the right way. He did it in a timely manner. And he came prepared to the Senate meetings and spoke very well on why it should be done. You know, that's great experience. And it serves him well as an academic affairs commissioner. You know, all of them have great experience and great track records. And what they have done so far would give them more of the capability to be at the top of my you know, commissioners next year if elected, or wherever they wanted to be. There'd be no other candidates I'd put before them, as well as Jared, who is no doubt, like he always says, a great advocate for the many students on this campus. I mean, my guy, I mean, you know, I agree with what he said. They're all great. I can see myself working really well with any of them. Um, sort of, if I get elected, by definition, we have a mixed administration. <laughs> 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 so part of it, it's not so much, you know, how, uh, like, I, how do I make them, like, sort of, how do I make the other tickets fit in with me? Part of me has to wonder how I'm going to fit in with them. That's the question I have to ask myself. I mean, obviously, I've talked about, like, I have these certain guiding principles that I don't really let up on. Um, but that being said, after that, I'm a bit of a pluralist about how we get things done. And I think that, generally, people want to do a good job at the position they see. And so, as long as we sort of as a, like, as a president, we sort of set a general vision. These are like the general things that we are going to do. And then I think that members of Senate are going to try really hard to do the best they can uh, to really help this university. Uh, and I, I, mean, I think it's entirely possible with any member from uh, any ticket. I mean, honestly, I'd love to see it. Well, one, I'd love to see me get elected. It'd be awesome. But I'd love to see if we had members from each ticket on, like, on, the, uh, on Senate next year. I'd love to see like this different kind of perspective. I mean, I don't know if it'll happen. Uh, historically, it's typically straight ticket, but <laughs> and I mean, it's said every year, it's going to be said again this year, you know, after May 17th, after 7 o'clock, the, um, the party lines really come down, and I stick to that. Um, however, we ran a full ticket because we can, because we have the organization, because we have faith in the people out there wearing the blue shirts. And I'd like to point out there's, what, 60, 65 additional positions that need to be appointed. And um, a lot of times the other tickets, uh, if they're not elected, fill those positions. Um, do you guys have anything to add? Uh, yeah, um, I can speak to Jared's merit, definitely. Um, I, when he was at my commission meetings, he was very uh, contributory. And uh, I mean, he, I was always amazed by how much he knew about the university. I, I would have no problem in my book seeing, seeing him replace uh, my position if I'm elected. Um, 
I, I'll speak to, you know, I don't know Liz all that well. I've heard, I can only go off your reputation. You have a good one. Um, so, yeah. They, but I can, sp I can speak to Tony a little bit more personally. I mean, Tony was there on my 21st birthday, um, you know. So I don't think you get much closer than that, right? <laughs> That's true. Um, like I said earlier, and I, I absolutely mean this. No one up here is running for the wrong intentions. No one's running to spite somebody. Everyone up here is here to do good. And I think if that's your true intention, if that's why you're really running, there will be more than enough spots available for individuals like that within students next year. First campus. Um, but second of all, and I think Mary Kate asked this, um, how do you plan to advocate for um, funding and programming for the diversity centers? Um, you know, they've taken, like every budget planning unit, have taken cuts in the last few years. Many of the directors are working three-day weeks. Um, and, and that's had an effect on programming. Um, how do you, so I guess, again, that's kind of the two tiers. Um, personal diversity in terms of your tickets and how you plan to represent a very diverse campus. But second of all, the diversity centers and programming in place, how do you plan to advocate for that? Yeah, I think right away when you want to talk diversity, um, oftentimes, when you run for a student center position, it's, it's harder than you think to get that diversity if you're committing a ticket. Um, you have to find the right people to talk to, and you have to find people who really want to do this. And that's very tough. I would stand out here and say, you know, we didn't get as much diversity on our ticket as we would have liked to. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I think there's something wrong about going out there and getting someone of a different race, a different culture, just to add diversity to your ticket. Uh, we tried with certain people so that we had diversity on our ticket. However, you know, we didn't want to go out there and just add diversity to our ticket for the sake of diversity. If someone with diverse, you know, a different race or different culture would have liked to join our ticket, they would have been more than welcome to and we would have loved it. Um, however, it didn't you know, really happen. I will tell you that one of the reasons that I asked Liz to be my vice president though was because all the people I was asking to be my vice president were females. I feel like that is important, uh, not just to have a female sitting up here next to me, but females have different perspectives than males, uh, no matter what race you are. And I really wanted that perspective on my ticket, and I think it's been beneficial thus far. Uh, when you want to talk about funding for diversity, uh, and Liz might want to talk about this for a second after me and know a little more, but I think what you really have to do is, you said it before talking about you know, how you're going to fund the institution, is try to find what money is there. Uh, sitting down and seeing what money is available, what money's there, and what money might not be being used in the right capacity. And then understand that diversity is such an important issue, let's put that money there. And that's what I would be a full supporter of. And if you'd like to say that. Um, well, I mean, I've done the legwork with this diversity thing. You know, like I said earlier, I went through Safe Zone training. That represents the LGBT community. <coughs> I've done the research, I've looked at the different diversity options that we have here. It's part of the reason why I love this school, you know? I've said before, I only applied here. Diversity is part of the reason why I love this campus. I love walking down, you know, in front of the library. You see so many different kinds of people, so that's definitely just so important to me. I want to work on collaborating, you know, different organizations on this campus. They can combine, they can pool their resources, and just, you know, that way different organizations will get to know each other, they'll get to do more things on this campus. That's just one of my ideas. I'm probably the least diverse ticket running. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, when, uh, in the last debate, when we were asked, like, what were the three things that we prioritized above all else? And my answer was uh, academics, uh, health, like health and disability services, and then diversity and access centers. And that includes diversity and access scholarships. I think it's a very important part. You know, part of being um, a white male living in America today is uh, recognizing that I don't have the best perspective on all issues, and that uh, when it comes to issues of diversity, I'm not an expert. And it, I think you have to be humble about that, and you have to say you have to defer to someone else who knows better than you. We have a lot of great people at this campus working with that, and I would definitely take their input uh, at any opportunity. Um, I, I think when you, you think reach, you have to think diversity. We have in individuals with different genders, different sexes, different races, different nationalities, different creeds, different beliefs, different sexualities. And they weren't picked because they were different. They were picked because they were the best damn candidate for the spot. That's what REACH is about. Diversity for us is important, but it wasn't the reason why people got picked. They, that was second. Because they have diversity is just a plus, in my opinion. I think it's awesome to have so many different ideas, opinions, thoughts, and people 
represented on our ticket. And I think it's important to note that when it comes to diversity centers, I think, first of all, something that's on our platform, advocate for 12-month contracts. We have to make sure that our diversity centers are open 365 days a year so that no student feels unwanted, no student you know, doesn't feel like the doors aren't open. They should always be open. Secondly, we need to make sure we are developing relationships with the diversity center leaders. Something the three of us have with Mickey, with various other uh, diversity center leaders, I think that's crucial. Um, and lastly, where's the money going to Lynx and Amstel? That I know that's not directly related to student senate, but that's a huge issue on campus. We must make sure that we're pressuring and uh, really representing the students' voices on this, that the provost's office can't keep taking away money from these programs, that we need to make sure that diversity scholarships are available to students who want to come to Ohio University, not the other way around. So reach really is diversity.